Hello Jack, hello everyone. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to step away from films for a moment and have a look at one of my other favourite forms of entertainment, video games. Changes over the last few years and recent developments with the likes of Shadow of War and Battlefront 2 have been increasingly worried about the, the future of the video games industry and what it might mean not only to me as a gamer but as a father. But firstly I'll give you a quick rundown of my background as a gamer. Born in the mid 80s I missed out on the Atari generation and my first exposure to video games was with old BBC computers at school running off floppy disks that were actually floppy and games such as Giant Killer and Cubert. Since I've been a gamer I've had my dad complaining about the electricity bill because I left Mario on pause overnight so I don't lose my progress. I've blown my mates away in Bomberman and spent nights fighting with my friends because choosing odd job gives an unfair advantage in GoldenEye multiplayer. Some of my fondest memories are of playing Halo Co-op with my little brother. I remember the revelation that was Wolfenstein 3D and watched this blossom into Doom, Duke Nukem, Half-Life, Call of Duty and Crisis. I've seen strategy games evolve from Dune 2 to Zed, Command and Conquer, Total Annihilation, the Total War series, Supreme Commander. I've been drawn into many an adventure across Ultima, Diablo, Baldur's Gate, Knights of the Old Republic, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Mass Effect and The Witcher series. I've heard internet gaming start with the annoying sound of a dial-up modem. <laughs> to Quake, Unreal Tournament, Counter-Strike 1.6, World of Warcraft, EVE Online and Dota 2. I've watched graphics evolve from 16-bit sprites to hundreds of 3D polygons to hundreds of thousands of polygons and entire universes. And I've seen gaming go from the niche of the unpopular and nerdy to the mainstream art form as relevant as books and cinema. And in recent years I've seen the video game industry evolve from pushing the boundaries of processing, graphics and memory to give us fun and interesting games to one pushing the boundaries of morality as they try to milk as much cash out of us as they can. EA's release of Battlefront 2 has been met with outrage by the gaming community over its pay-to-win loot box microtransactions and is looking to have been the flaming inferno that finally draws the attention of gaming commissions. Now DLC and microtransactions don't bother me in their entirety. One of my favourite games is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It's the game that's always installed on my hard drive and I always end up going back to after whatever the latest game there has been. With its cosmetic only loot boxes I can ignore them entirely or buy one now and then to support server maintenance and esports tournaments. And whether my opponents have no gun skins or a hundred it gives them no gameplay advantage. Battlefront 2's loot boxes however are significantly tied into its progression system, unlocking better weapons and skills. So those who pay more for more loot boxes are given a significant gameplay advantage over those who do not. This is called pay to win. Now I'd like to address some of the groups involved or affected by these money-hungry tactics and offer some thoughts. See this face? You have shown us time and again that you are willing to line your own pockets by subjecting my son and other young children to predatory gambling practices they are neither mentally or financially equipped to deal with. Shame on you. You have every right to earn a fair profit, but for too long you have pushed these greedy tactics further and further. All the while taking advantage of people we all know include people with addiction problems, people with more money than sense, and children using their own parents' money sometimes without their knowledge. And almost always to the detriment of the quality of your games. Developers have my utmost sympathy as they seem to be caught between a rock and a hard place. I'm sure many of the developers at DICE who have created a fantastic game with brilliant visuals and interesting battlefield and starship combat just want to make a good game that looks good and people enjoy playing. And on the other hand they have to answer to their publisher and put in microtransactions even if they feel that they're wrong for the game. And all the while these people are trying to feed their families, get a regular income and at the other time they're having to fight for their artistic integrity and trying to find a balance between their artistic integrity and the need to feed their families I'm sure has been a difficult one for them to bear. 
It's all well and good for the gamers to say that developers should just quit the company and move on somewhere else with better morals, but we all know it's never that easy. Some have said that loot box microtransactions do not meet the definition for gambling because you are always rewarded with something. But by this logic I could open up a gambling website aimed at children and as long as they get a penny in return for every bet then I'm free and clear. Is that so? Whether loot box microtransactions meet the legal definition for gambling or not doesn't matter. Laws need to be brought in to regulate these harmful and addictive systems that young children are exposed to before they have the mental or the financial means to deal with them. Gone are the days where you can just buy your child a computer game and forget about it. Now you need to put in serious research as to whether the £40 you're paying at the shop is all you're going to be paying or whether you need to be paying small additional amounts over the months and years to come to unlock further content. Parents also need to be more fin financially aware of what their child is spending their money on. I would be very unhappy if I was giving Jack his you know, £5 pocket money a month or whatever and to find out that he'd blown it all within 15 seconds on some loot box gambling transactions. Parents also need to be more financially aware. Restricting access to your bank details for your PC, Xbox, PlayStation 4 as it is easy for a child to see a mic microtransaction in their game, click buy and before you know it £5, £10, £100 disappeared from your bank account without your knowing about it. Parents will have to review games thoroughly before you can buy them for your children to find out whether what you're buying is the game or whether there's going to be portions of the game that are locked off under further fees or whether parts of the game are going to involve these hazardous and harmful microtransactions. Similarly, reviewers are going to have to start taking more responsibility and including information about these microtransactions as part of their reviews. For the future I can see one of two things happening. Either regulating bodies are going to have to put standards in place that limit microtransactions and the way they are implemented in games, or the gaming industry will continue to push microtransactions further and further until one day a game will come out and become a huge sellout hit because it had the novel idea that when you pay £40 for a video game you actually get the video game rather than the shell of a game you have to pay extra to unlock more content for all the while playing a gambling simulator. Gamers have had a tough time of it lately what with Shadow of War and Battlefront 2 since both of them look to have been fantastic games riddled by these microtransactions. I don't know, I haven't bought either of them, I'm not giving them any of my money, but from what I've seen from reviews and gameplay footage, both of them look to have been brilliant games brought down by including these unnecessary microtransactions. And gamers are going to have to continue to decide whether to vote with their wallets and forego what could be a great game, or risk exposing themselves to addictive gambling systems that could see them paying a lot more than what the game cost. There are some interesting games set to come out this year, but with some calling 2017 The Year of the Loot Box. We'll have to see if the trend continues and 2018's games are hobbled by microtransactions. Or in a year we'll be referring to 2018 as the year the games industry listened to its customers. I for one won't be holding my breath.